Now we want to turn to the importance of female representation in film and television. A recent study by UCLA shows that minority women make up just one quarter of film writers and one fifth of directors. Here is actress Porna Jagannathan talking to Artie Shahani about her role as a tiger mom in the hit Netflix show by Mindy Kaling, Never Have I Ever, and why diversity is so important in this golden era of streaming. Thanks, Biana. And Porna Jagannathan, it's so wonderful to have you here with us today. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Thank you for having me. I loved watching the second season of Never Have I Ever, and I am clearly not the only one. The show is a global phenomenon, a huge hit in the U.S., and sweeping the world is number one on Netflix. In India, South Africa, Peru, Germany, France, Brazil, many more countries. Why do you think, Porna, the show resonates so strongly with audiences around the world? I mean, you know, you hear it a lot and it's so true the more specific you are in telling a story somehow it becomes more universal mm. um and this is it resonates because there is a so much diversity not only in front of the camera in terms of the actors you see and you know uh, who they are but in diversity in, in storytelling so in season two you see you know, a uh, baby tackle um, her horniness and her weakness. <laughs> you kissing? Your father's ashes have barely begun to drift out to sea. I just got overcome with emotion. What are you going to do at my funeral? Just have sex on top of my grave? And um, you, 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 you see how she grapples with mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, you see her friends tackling uh, sexuality. And there's, you know, in, in our home, there's intergenerational conversations happening. And there's, um, you know, I often call it, there's different shades of feminism that, that, that come up within mm. a small household. So just again, like the, the breadth of um, people and topics, um, you're, you're and not in any way diluted, like fully actualized, wonderful three-dimensional characters in, 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 you know, conveying, like, a, a, like conveying these, these storylines so beautifully. I think you just, be it a child or being an, be it an adult, you just find yourself somehow within the, the storytelling. Your character on the screen, Nalini, uh, what struck me is how much she actually evolves in season two. In season one, I would say she was more of a stereotype, you know? tiger mom who wants her daughter to have straight A's and go to Ivy League, Ivy League school. And in season two, as I see it, she transforms into more of a full woman with needs who is aching to belong, right? Can you talk a little bit about that, that the way your character evolves? When I was in the process of accepting a job, it was obviously always from Netflix, but one day when the papers came through, I saw YA next to it. And I, I don't watch the genre. I didn't even know what YA could possibly stand for. And it stands for young adult. And I stopped in my tracks for a second and um, had to have a conversation with Mindy and Lang because I was not in that part of my career where I wanted to portray a Disney mother. How could you move on so quickly? I haven't moved on not at all. I, I, I miss your father so much that it physically hurts. I guess I just wanted a break from that pain. And um, I had too many important stories of uh, immigration that weren't told. Um, so I had a conversation about that and they were like, you know, Mindy Lang just, you know, so assured me. And they said, it's, it's such a deeper, storyline we don't even know how to write like that this woman you know has a full um uh, uh character arc you know which which was a wonderful so even in season one you do see these unbelievable um breaks in her tiger mom parenting right these um unbelievable like um fractures where the grief will come through and it, it was i like no, by, by episode two she has a miscarriage which that kind of stuff is not shown for our community. Our, our loss and our grief and what women struggle with and what being a mom means is not shown. So it was, it was a huge breakthrough. Mm. And that's interesting, that point of being so three-dimensional. Your character also develops a romance uh, with a fellow doctor. Yes. He is played by the rapper and actor Common. Let's have a look at that for a moment. 
I am so mortified that that must have been the worst state of your entire life. Nah, I once got stuck in a rotating restaurant that kept speeding up. <laughs> Chris, I do not think this is going to work out. Because of your daughter? Mm -hmm. And honestly, me too. I think it might be a little too soon. I think I will be ready in a few years, but you'll probably be snatched up by then. Oh, uh, I don't know. Some people don't like me when they first meet me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll see you in the elevator. I look forward to that. An Indian widow longing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this, um, what I love about season two, what I love about the show, it is a very complex anatomy of grief, actually. Like, as I was going through the episodes, and especially this scene or where she says, uh, I'm not ready, and then coming back to um, to that previous scene where where she gets caught by her, her daughter and gets ratted out. It's just, you know, the difference between when you lose someone, it's probably it's the difference between what does moving forward versus moving on really look like. Um, mm. Nalini is just trying to move forward. That baby's just trying to move forward. And there's a couple of steps back that they have to take and it's not, uh, it's not moving on. Um, it is far, you know, far from moving on. I don't even think it's been a year since uh, since her husband died. And it's a very delicate, very intricate, um, nuanced portrayal of grief for me. Mm. Another aspect of the scene, it's not just this exploration, as you say, of, of a woman who is grieving and trying to figure out how to be seen and peace life together. Mm -hmm. There's also a really interesting racial subtext going on in the scene. Common is African-American. And you and I well know that racism, colorism runs deep in the South Asian community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I wondered in watching that, the choice of casting him, making him your love interest, did Mindy Kaling and other show creators intentionally set out to take this on, to challenge you know, South Asians in the era of Black Lives Matter? So there's a couple of things that are happening. Um, I think this this show normalizes a lot. And uh, yes, I mean, like a black, brown love shown on screen without like people killing themselves is like, epic, right? that's like a whole new thing. Um, but I mean, you know, we see it in the White House in the form of the vice president, but in pop culture, less so. This is, it's, it's, not, it's not normalized. Um, and I'd love to talk about that. There's so much in here that doesn't have subtitles and doesn't have an explanation. My use of Tamil, my, you know, the, the, the stuff that we do, there, there's no, there's no um, addendum to any of the things that we do. Um, you know, Davy's uh, personality and her nerdiness and her, anything doesn't, doesn't have a uh, bibliography attached somehow. There's, there's also no characters translating what you're like if I speak something Tamil no one's translating it into mm -hmm. English just and I think this was another uh thing of normalizing a black brown relationship without any explanation and any of the drama at all however Common was a huge fan of the show and I know Mindy and Lang heard of it mm -hmm. um and so when they were thinking of a um a love interest I think they kind of thought of him first when you say that the show normalizes without over discussing the fact of normalizing, do you believe that the crew, the creators, went into it aware of the colorism in the South Asian community and kind of knowing we're going to be challenging a bit here? Was that ever a conversation? Yeah, I think they do it all the time. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a, anything as they're they're way too smart for anything to be a coincidence. They really, <laughs> it's, it's it's the most diverse writers' room. Uh, that I have ever been, been you know, in, in a show. There's, I think, more than 50% are are people of color, and there's lots of different sexualities, and I think there's four South Asians in the room. Um, 
it is uh it is it, it i think everything in there is deliberate you know i think uh, and uh, i think the 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 goal is to move conversations forward to normalize to um to mirror and to portray new ways of being mm, there's a real power in that let's talk about the writers room the di the diversity of it um people of color in addition to Mindy Kaling how does that diversity impact the script that you get and that the role that you end up playing it's such a great question because it's been on my mind a lot uh, for diversity in front of the camera to work it actually needs an ecosystem of diversity behind mm -hmm. it and I think Mindy and Lang have created just that so the producers the showrunners the mm -hmm. team of uh, in Netflix, you know, we have, we have Brooke Kessel, we have Bela Bajaria, we have, we have, uh, uh, you know, stripping down to a writer's room that is radically diverse. And each one will tell you that they've never been in a more diverse um, uh, room before. And how, you know, when you're the only brown girl in a room and you, and you present a storyline, or you present an idea, there's no one to back you up or no one to add kind of those tributaries, like those, those, those additional stories that can flesh it out. So there's, you know, um, so I, I, I kind of remember Mindy saying that it was a very cathartic thing to be in the writer's room because all these brown girls were saying that happened to me too. And that happened to me too. And I, I think the power of this uh, show is the actors feel like they can grab this material and they can own it but what happens to to the audience member is they look at it and like okay how how did they know that how, how that detail how did they know that happened to me so there's it's so personal because it's coming from um real lived in experience which is not the case in other shows which is mind-boggling to me for now, let's talk about Hollywood as an industry. According to a UCLA study, women make up just one quarter of film writers, one fifth of directors, minorities, one quarter of writers and directors. And they, or I should say we, are working with less money. White film directors are more than twice as likely to have a film budget of $100 million or more. These are astounding figures. These are disappointing figures. Do you see on the ground from your vantage point people of color talents of color gaining traction like true traction or do you see the surge in diverse content more as kind of a blip on the map a reaction to me too and black lives matter but not really a sea change no i i, I really don't i mean i think uh there are more places to tell your story now you know Netflix and the Hulu and the Amazon, and therefore more stories are being told. Um, and I think more people are given chances. Um, so like Arami, you know, the, the budgets aren't huge, or even our show, the budgets are really not huge. And you started um, Arami as well. Right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 so, so, I do think shows like ours and Rami and movies like Crazy Rich Asians and The Farewell, they all start, you know, when you string them together, you start seeing a bigger story being told, which is diversity works. And like this show, it works to bring in a global audience, one that is really, um, it's uh, very desirable for a streaming platform or a, you know, a, 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 you know any service. And as you start connecting the dots, and these are these movies and shows just happen. Like we we're in a very you know it's like four four years maybe, um, so it's a very recent tale. But they are they resonate and they are profitable. They so you sound quite optimistic about it. And do you feel like you know there's the representation you see on the screen? Like oh look, South Asians get to play doctors and engineers. Is is that the shift that we're seeing, or do you actually think we're breaking away from that narrowness? I think it's people like us who are breaking the narrative because as you know, Mindy Kaling or a or a Rami, um, they it, it's them telling their stories, right? So it's not a Caucasian person or someone who's coming in and saying, let's 
let's diversify. Let's let's get you out of that, you know, that that model minority thing. I mean, I, I think if Hollywood had had its way, we'd still be doing a lot more doctors and a lot more scientists. But I think it's it's people. It's an inside job. They're telling their own stories and using using different ways to tell it. And their stories is a you know, they're they're messy human beings, and you know, they're they're deeply flawed, and that's the part that I think as a uh, as an actor, the the other parts I was playing just, you know, I often say that the problem with the my, minority myth or the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but, you know, they are incomplete. It's, it's, mm. Uh, mm. Mm-hmm. it's the saying, and I, and I felt in my other roles, I'd, I'd show up and I could never leave my full se- full self on a set. I'd only bring a sliver of who I am, and suddenly I'm on a set like Rami, or never have I ever, and I can bring everything. Mm-hmm. Porna Jagannathan, I want to thank you for speaking with me. Oh, this was so lovely. Thank you for having me.